Alright guys, I am back for my third installment of my top products of 2017. Uh, the lighting in this one might be a bit different. Just as I went to gather my skincare products from the bathroom, uh, I turned off my ring light, turned it back on, and the bulb blew. So, uh oh, spaghetti-o. <laughs> That's really annoying. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that replaced. Oh. Can't be bothered, I'm so lazy. Anyway, so this is my third video uh, of this series, which is just my top products of 2017. Like the title says, my last one was about eyes, lips. The first one was face makeup. Now this one is all the other stuff. So brushes, fragrances, nail polish, skincare, hair care, etc. So let's get on to it. All right, I'm going to start with fragrances because I have them right here. Um, if you did watch my Project Pan series uh, throughout 2017, I did start introducing fragrances. Um, I mentioned that I've got a lot of fragrances and they're starting to become like a fragrance graveyard. Uh, some of them are starting to go a bit off and if I can use them up, I would like to. And I'd like to have more of a capsule collection where there's only like two or three that I have on the go any one time um, and repurchase it if I want to. Uh, having like a dozen or 20 perfumes just sitting around, uh, I didn't like the idea of it. So I'm trying to get through that and I'll continue that in my Project Pan of 2018. But the fragrance that I really love and I have repurchased, I've got a backup of this, um, is my CK2 by Calvin Klein. Um, you can see there's not much left in it. I've got, I bought another one of these, which is the 100 mil. Um, and I also have a rollerball which I have in my handbag. Uh, this is a beautiful fragrance. It's very, very light, very, very fresh. It kind of reminds me of water. Um, I have been told that it's got a salty scent, which I think is true, but it kind of reminds me of... It, I, I wouldn't associate it with salt unless you say it. It just kind of smells like a lake or like a running, running water. It's really, really beautiful and it does last. It's quite... It's quite powerful what it for what it is, and for me, I can smell it on me at the end of the day. So I really love this. It's my favorite, um, and the only reason I have any left of this is because I've been trying to use up other fragrances. Otherwise, this would have been gone months ago. So that's definitely my favorite. The next one is my newest fragrance purchase. I only bought it in the last month or so, um, but I really enjoy it. And it's been one that I've been wanting to buy for a while, but I told myself I can't buy any more fragrances unless I use up three. So... I'll use up three and then I can buy another one. Um, but this is sort of a Christmas present to myself and it's the Molecule 04. So if you're not familiar with this eccentric mo molecule brand, um, they have this particular molecule that they put in the fragrance that adapts to your skin. All fragrance really changes to your skin, but this one, it does it more so or something. Um, and the, like the number one version in this range, I think is just that molecule. So it smells really different than other people um, and you can't really smell it on yourself. Whereas this one, it's got that molecule in with other scents. And I like this more because I can kind of smell the other scent. Um, it's really nice and fresh. So this isn't like floral or feminine. It's more of, uh, it's got grapefruit and it smells really fresh and sort of like plants. Um, I have noticed a theme. I like fresh kind of um, outdoor smelling things, not flowers, um, but this kind of smells like rivers. This kind of smells like, I don't know, air, like the air on a nice spring day or something. Um, but both of these are unisex as well. So I like fresh unisex fragrances I've learnt, but um, this only came out this year. It's very nice. All right, I'm gonna talk about brush sets and there are three sets that I got this year that I really love and have heavily incorporated into my um, brush range, brush collection, whatever. Um, so the first one that I got was a Sigma pack. Now I'll put a photo on the screen because I don't remember which one it's called off the top of my head. And it's sort of like so intertwined in my my brush range that I I don't know which ones were the ones in it. But anyway, Sigma brushes are beautiful. Um, it was really my first dive into Sigma brushes. I'd used a few liner brushes before, um, but I realized how nice quality these are. I even went to Japan and bought some Hakuhodo brushes, including a few eye brushes. And I noticed that um, sometimes I'll go to pick up a brush and I'm like, oh, it's my Hakuhodo one. I'm like, no, it's my Sigma one. And then other ones I'll pick up like my Hakuhodo one. I'm like, oh, it's my Sigma one. I'm like, oh no, it's Hakuhodo. So even though the quality of the bristles are very different, I feel like the effect that it gives and the feel, especially with the eye brushes, are pretty similar. So Sigma for me, one of my favorite, uh, just decent quality brush ranges. 
I love it. So that was like probably my favorite. Um, I also have been loving this pack, which was from Morphe. Uh, I was the first time I bought Morphe brushes um, and I was pleasantly surprised. This pack was the Jaclyn Hill favorites. So she picked, handpicked, I think, I don't know how many it was, 18 or 23 brushes or something. It was like heaps of brushes. So they sold it for a reasonably decent price, uh, including this like storage case which um, I don't really use on a daily basis but it's really cool if you take it traveling because it opens up like that and it can be like a brush sort of tray so I really like this I love the brushes that are in it uh, this is one of them so I use this as sort of like a big bronzer brush or a big sort of powder brush decent quality like they feel really nice they work really well um, I've heard a lot of bad stories from Morphe brushes but personally the ones that were handpicked to be in that range anyway were really really good my only sort of limitation i think with it was that there were so many brushes but since it was handpicked by jacqueline hill they were brushes that she likes to use so there's a lot of contouring brushes there are a lot of sort of like fluffy eyeshadow brushes um, of all different sizes and cuts and whatnot um, but because i use sort of similar brushes that jacqueline hill likes i I like them all. I thought they were really good. So I continue to use these. I really enjoy them. Um, and if you are scared to use Morphe brushes, uh, I would go for like a well rated pack um, because they can be really, really beautiful. Another pack that I came across recently, I was actually sent these um, and these are really, really great as well. This is by Ala Cosmetics and um, this is a 15 piece brush set. I do have some other randoms in here, a Morphe one and a Nostalgia Beverly Hills. Um, but these, it's a 15 piece brush set, which you get for 150 Australian dollars, which is really good. All these brushes, once again, are very, very usable. Um, at, like they're things that you know, powder brushes. This is a beautiful buffing brush for um, foundation. I've been loving it. This is a beautiful uh, highlighter or kind of contour brush. Um, beautiful pink sort of handles. I've been really loving them. Similar quality to something like Sigma. So yeah, it's an Australian based brand uh, run by Three Sisters. So um, I think it's a good one to support, but it also comes in this kind of uh, case that you can either clip down and have it as like a travel case or you can have it as two cups which I tend to have like one dirty one clean so um, I have that on my desk so that's another brush pack that I've been really loving all right I'm going to talk about hair products and I've probably mentioned this last year I probably mentioned them the year before um, but they're pretty much the only hair products that I continue to use um, so my favorite dry shampoo you'll see it in my uh, empties time and time again it's the blighty brunette by polish london so Blighty Brunette is the fact that it's the brunette one. Um, these retail for a whole $5 in Australia. Um, so I often stock up when they're half price. So $2.50 and I find it's not the most uh, oil absorbing dry shampoo, but it doesn't leave a white cast. It's not too expensive. Uh, I can put a lot on and it, you can't see it. Uh, it's just a really nice, I don't know, it's like a subtle dry shampoo. It works, but it's not overkill. I find Batiste is way overkill. It makes me look like I've got crazy powder hair, whereas this is sort of like a step down, which is really nice. Um, and then also, you know, you've, I've mentioned these many times, uh, the Hask or Husk um, hair oils. So the, my favorite ones are the Kalahari melon oil and also the Argan oil, which smells like orange. This smells like melon it's amazing i've also upgraded i realized they brought out um the argan oil one in a bigger pump bottle so i've since bought that as well uh these retail in australia for i think 4.95 each once again i picked them up when they're half price uh they're amazing i want the red one in the pump bottle too so hair oils i love onto skincare there's a few skincare products i've been really loving uh shiramira cleansing oil i always use this um, i'm going through a small bottle but um, i've also used a big bottle this year i love it um, but the one thing that i've figured rivals it and this is very good so this is by pixie um, and it was a collab with Carolyn Hirons, who is a skincare blogger slash YouTuber. Um, and they brought this out uh, when Pixie was doing a lot of collabs. So in my first video, I mentioned a blush from Pixie that was in that collab. Um, there's a really nice face palette. There's really nice um, eyeshadow palette in that collection as well. Um, but this I was really, really impressed by. So this is a double cleanse. So it's a, a solid oil and also a 
cleansing cream. So if you open it up, I'm not sure if you can see in this lighting, but half of it is a cleansing oil in a solid form. So it's not a cleansing balm. It's not sticky. It's not like greasy. It's not like thick. It uh, warms into an oil. So it's just a solid oil and it removes makeup just as good as the Shuramura one, but it's cheaper. And then on the other side, there's a cream cleanser, which is a beautiful cream cleanser. They work really well together. They work really well individually. Um, I would love the cream cleanser to be in like a pump bottle, something like that. And I'd like a full tub of the uh, cleansing oil because these are great, um, but this is really good for traveling. I like using the cleansing cream in the morning. I like using the cleansing oil at night. It's just, they're so good together. So uh, if you want to try a decent cleansing oil that won't break the bank, but is still really good quality, this one. They've also got a cleansing balm in this range. Not good, but this is fab. Another thing from Pixie that I've been really loving and I've brought these traveling and I use them all the time um, is the Pixie Glow Tonic To Go. So if you aren't familiar with the Glow Tonic, it's like the hero product. Um, it is sort of a chemical exfoliating toner. So it's got glycolic acid in it and it's just really good at brightening and um, you know, getting new skin to come out and getting rid of the dead skin cells. Um, I don't really use toners, I'm really lazy, but if they're in a pad form, for some reason, I'm all over it. So these are just pads sort of soaked in uh, the same glow tonic and this was really great traveling. I tend to use this to clean my skin in the morning um, because I shower at night. So yeah, I really love this. And if you want to try the glow tonic, but you don't like the inconvenience of having to have cotton pads and whatever, this is a great little one. I think this is the third tub I've got this year. The next product I wanted to mention is a local product. Uh, so this is from the brand Embarchi, which is a Melbourne brand. So the owners are really, really lovely. Their skincare products are really great. I tried them when they first hit the market. Oh, I'm thinking four years ago now. Um, they had like a three-step cleanser, toner, and moisturizer. Really, really nice. Um, I've been using this and I am obsessed with it. So this is the Deep Exfoliant uh, Pore Clarifying Skin Smoothing Microdermabrasion Exfoliating Scrub and this is great. So I have this in my shower and it is one of my best friends. Um, so what I like in an exfoliating product is I like really fine particles but a lot of them. So it feels like you're really getting a good scrub but you're not scratching your skin and that's exactly what this is. Also it smells really nice. It just smells fresh and beautiful, but it is a really finely gentle um, exfoliating product. Oh God, it feels so good. Oh, it's so good. It smells nice, it feels nice, I love it. So it almost feels like it dries down to a dry rub because that's how many, that's how much particles it has in it. It's really, really great. It reminds me like a more intense version of um, St. Ives Green Tea Scrub back when that was good. This is like a more intense version, more like a high quality, beautiful scented version. And I love this. Highly recommend it. Um, it's great. Also, they've opened their flagship store in Paran. So if you are in Melbourne and you want to check out some skincare, um, go and buy this. All right, my second last skincare item that I love very dearly uh, is the BioEffect EGF Serum. So this is... Um, a really interesting product and I've looked at reviews online and some are really good and some are really bad um, and the ones that I've noticed that are really bad are the ones that they're written by people that didn't know how to use this so this is a serum from a brand based in Iceland um, and it is a serum and you only put two to four drops I generally put about three drops I'll have a shower get out of the shower pat dry my face if it's when it's a little bit damp I'll put two to three drops of this in my face and that's it so once you cleanse your skin at night you put this on and nothing else you don't feel like you need a moisturizer because it's hydrating enough um, and this helps stimulate the skin to because um, it it kind of coats the skin if, if it feels sticky you're using way too much um, you got to pair it back and use way less it's also really expensive so you don't want to use too much um, but it sort of like coats the skin and um, encourages growth and regeneration of the skin so my skin looks heaps more plump it looks so much more bouncy and kind of just I don't know good it looks so much better when I've been using this and it it is expensive so it's around $200 in Australia, 
but because you use so little and you don't have to use any other skincare with it, um, it makes it amazing. The reviews that I've heard from people that don't like it are people that put skincare on top of it. So like use it as a conventional serum and then put a moisturizer on top. You don't do that, it kind of ruins the effects. But if you just use this on clean skin, it works really well. I've also heard that a few people have been worried about this because EGF, which is um, epidermal growth factor, uh, it can, if you've got like skin cancer or something on your face, it can encourage cancerous cells to grow. So it doesn't cause cancer, but if you've got anything that's like cancerous, I have heard that you stay away from these types of products, but if you don't, they're miracle workers. They pretty much make your skin regenerate like it used to when you're a kid. So it's fab. I love it. Okay, the last thing that's skincare related isn't as expensive as that at all. Um, in fact, it's probably like a 20th of the price. Uh, it is my favorite sunscreen. So this is the SunSense Moisturizing Face for face and neck. Uh, SPF 50 plus, uh, I've got barely any of this left. I need to go buy some more. Um, I love this range and I, this is my favorite one. Over the past, I think year and a half, I've used the mattifying one, which I really liked. I used the anti-aging one, which I really liked. Um, but this just moisturizing face one is my favorite. It's a very thin, runny uh, sunscreen. Um, so I'll show it to you if I've got any left. All right, so I barely got any left because um, I've used so much of it. So it's a really thin uh, sunscreen and you blend it in and it pretty much goes into nothing. It's super lightweight. You can put quite a generous amount on. It doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't move my foundation. It's really, really, really beautiful, really light. Um, SPF 50 plus UVA, UVB protection, really, really great. I wear it every single day. So that's why I'm so pale in the face. But um, yeah, it's worth finding a sunscreen that you can wear every single day. And this is the one that I love the most and that I recommend to everyone. I think it's about 10 to 15 bucks. You can find it on sale. Um, and this I can use, I think for about six months. That's how much use I get out of it. Um, highly recommend. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about are nail polishes and I've got three that are probably my favorite of the year. Um, none of them are the ones I'm wearing ironically. Um, but the one that I got, I think just after Christmas 2016, I don't know if I mentioned it in my 2016 favorites, but it's the, my most used one of the year is my Kester Black. Um, this is in terrarium. So it's this beautiful color. It's the same color as my dress, but it's a beautiful, bright, um, turquoise, greeny blue color. And I'm obsessed with it. Whenever I wear it, people are like, what are you wearing? It's always this. Um, but more recently I've come across this really great indie brand from Tasmania. Um, and we do sort of swatch videos on the beauty news channel. And I picked up two shades that I really, really love. So this one is from the Christmas collection and it's in a rosy glow. This is a one coat wonder. It's rose gold, really, really micro fine glitter. And I will put it on for you because you'll see how amazing it is. But I actually bought one for a friend for Christmas and I bought it back up. That's how much I love this. Um, so it is... Okay, let's have a look. So if I just put it on... We focused the camera? Probably not. If we just put it on my finger, you can see it coats my whole nail. So that is one coat. So I was wearing bright pink, bright pink, and you can see that the nail, like the rose gold has covered it. It is amazing. If you like a sparkly nail, this is fantastic. Um, and I also really love the cream formulas from that range as well. So did I even mention what it was? Did I even mention this was graceful nail polish? I don't know if I did, but it is graceful nail polish. Um, but this one is blueberry and it's one that I've been wearing a lot in the last uh, month as well. Um, and once again, this is a one coat wonder and for a shade like this, having a one coat wonder is crazy. So once again, over pink, So yeah, that blue is over the pink and it's one coat. And the fact that they are so smooth and they are so pigmented, uh, they last a nice amount of time. I'm obsessed with them. So let's just do this one for good measure. So yeah, those are the three colors that I've been loving the most this year. I love bright blues and I love sparkles. So we have terrarium, blueberry and uh, rosy glow. So graceful nail polish, Kester Black, both indie brands from Australia. And I love them.
I love them. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. Um, that was a marathon of a filming session. Bugger about my ring light. That's really annoying. But I will see you next week. I will be doing my least favorite products of the year and I'll also be starting uh, Project Pan. So I really want to get my Project Pan started. Uh, it's going to be a seasonal one. I'm going to do a bunch of different things on my channel this year, but I'll probably explain that to you next week because we've had enough. We've had enough. So if you do want to see my other videos, they'll be on the screen. Everything will be in the description box as well. Um, let me know what your favorite products of 2017 were. I'm very interested. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.